been using this multimeter right here for almost two years now, but it's only been a month since I've been using it finally as a data logger because I wasn't even aware that this uh, feature existed. Now, this might some sound familiar to you, isn't it? Like we might be using some tools or software applications for years and months. And finally we discover a cool new feature that it already comes built in. So for today's video, we will be looking how to use a multimeter with the data logging feature to kind of collect some voltage values to chart the typical battery discharging and charging profile. For this purpose of the video, we will be specifically using this multimeter, which is called 121GWEV blog multimeter. The first thing to note about data logging is that this multimeter comes with an SD card for storing the data that we will be collecting. And it is also available as a CSB format when we want to eventually get the data out of the SD card. Now, another crucial thing to note about the data logging is the logging interval. For this multimeter, it can range from 200 milliseconds to 999 seconds. That's a really, really long time. As instructed, we can go to the menu item Lawn X using setup and hold and then kind of press arrow up and down to uh, change the interval. So here's the multimeter I have. So let me just turn it on. So I'm just going to press setup and make sure it goes to the lawn X menu. And there you see it is set as lawn 60, which means I've set it to 60 seconds. So why don't I, for the purpose of demo, just go to say five seconds. And after I press and hold the setup for a while, you see that lawn 60 will start blinking. And this is where I can basically go ahead and change it. So I'm going to change it all the way down to five. So there you see now lawn five is blinking, which means that the interval is set to every five seconds. And next I'm just going to press and hold the setup until it is logged in. So now it's no longer blinking. So which means we have saved the value five seconds as the interval. Now, one final thing to note, uh, especially before we start data logging is the battery life of the multimeter. Well, in this case, we have over 500 hours. So if we are doing hour long experiments, this should not be an issue. All right. So here comes the fun part. So we are going to hook up this multimeter with the circuit right here, and we are going to finally start logging. So the first thing to note is the circuit that I'm using. So this is the EV blog multimeter and the positive terminal will be attached to the LiPo battery and the negative terminal will be attached to the negative terminal of the LiPo battery. Now, in this case, I am using the equivalent load resistor to kind of uh, say that this is the entire circuit and it could be exchangeable with any circuit that we have built or we are trying to measure. So as you can see that I have already put the dial in the volt voltage and uh, of course I've also hooked up the probes uh, to the positive and the negative terminal. Now as for the actual wires, this is how I have kind of uh, uh, put the end of the positive terminal to a bunch of uh, JST connectors so that they can come in parallel connection. And this is the circuit you see that I have uh, kind of uh, put the LiPo battery with the multimeter probes and uh, the negative terminal, I'm just gonna hook it to the ground. And there you see, we have hooked up the negative terminal to the ground and the multimeter is actually measuring it. It is hovering from about 3.9 volts to about four volts, which is uh, probably the region of measurement when we are using a LiPo battery. Next, let's talk about the Bluetooth feature of this multimeter. So for that, we will be using the iPhone app 121GW by EV blog. And if we go to the instruction manual, it is basically holding down the one MS millisecond peak button to turn on and off the Bluetooth data. So here we are with the iPhone as well as the multimeter. So let's go ahead and open up the app and we will start the Bluetooth by pressing this button. And once you do that, you will see that the symbol BT is right here. 
And once you refresh, you should be able to see the one to one GW, which we can go ahead and press. And you will see that the values are being mirrored exactly to the iPhone. So I'm going to just uh, switch off the Bluetooth by pressing it off. And it is, as you can see, it's no longer updating on the iPhone. And finally, we come to the most exciting part of the data logging, which is to start the data logging and stop it. And to do that, it is uh, just to press the MEMS button and we should be able to see the logging interval right at the top right hand corner. And to stop it, it is also very, very similar. We have to press and hold the MEM button. So here I am in the multimeter. So let's go ahead and press the MEM button. And once we do that, notice that one is being uh, shown. And after five seconds, it's two. And there you see it has turned to two. And after a while, it will go to three. So basically, it is now logging the data, the voltage data in this case. And it will be storing the data into the SD card. So why don't we just uh, let it go for a minute or so? So it's been about uh, 16, 17 intervals, which is definitely more than a minute. And to stop it, I will simply press the mem once again. And there you go. It is no longer recording the data into the SD card. So now that we have recorded the data by pressing start and stop, it is all stored inside this multimeter. Now here comes the fun part. We are going to take out the SD card and import the data and have a look at it. So I'm just going to kind of switch off the multimeter and take out the probes. We also need to take out the jacket because the SD card resides at the back of it. And after we take out the jacket, uh, it looks a lot smaller, but we're going to flip it over and we are basically going to unscrew the back cover. And uh, after we have unscrewed it, let's go ahead and take it out. And as you can see here, the four uh, batteries, but uh, right here, you will be able to see the SD card. So let me go ahead and take out the SD card. And I'm going to use a jacket uh, to put the SD card in. And finally, put the SD card in my laptop. And there you see the SD card is right here. So let me open it up. And there you see the CSV file. So let me just copy it over to the desktop. We were measuring until the interval 16, 17, 18. And these were the approximate values that you see. Now I have gone ahead and did a charging and discharging profile of a typical LiPo battery with, of course, a customized uh, circuit. So this is a typical value that I've collected for charging a LiPo battery. And I've basically imported it to Google spreadsheets. This is how the charging graph looks like for my circuit. The discharging graph uh, or the data was also very, very interesting and it took uh, several hours. This is how the discharging profile basically looked like. It took about 10 hours to do a complete discharge. And if we look at the charging and the discharging graph of uh, my circuit that I've built, it is not unlike uh, a typical LiPo charging and discharging graph, which is a little bit of curved. And when we compare a typical charge and discharge graph, it kind of falls uh, into the same category. So I have uh, already put back the SD card right here, and then I'm going to put back the cover and screw it on. So I've been really, really enjoying uh, using my multimeter as a data logger. Thankfully, it is a feature that uh, my multimeter already comes with. Maybe your multimeter does as well. You can go ahead and look up uh, at your manual uh, for the multimeter. But this has been very, very convenient for me because firstly, it has freed up my laptop from uh, being uh, logging the data. And uh, secondly, which is even more important, is that a multimeter will give us a far more accurate value of, say, a current or a voltage that we want to measure for a circuit. So I hope this video has been useful. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.